Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome uh, to the Cricket Happening Show. Uh, well, uh, we don't have uh, much uh, cricket happening and uh, cricket happening uh, all around the world. Um, now, uh, as you know, uh, you know, I basically I am a bit uh, short of time. Uh, if I had time and you know, maybe it was uh, cricket was a full time profession for me, probably I could have just, you know, scanned the nook and cranny and come up with some, but you know, time becomes a big constraint. Uh, while you know um, catching up with your office chores and you know also doing this as a passion uh, which uh, you all dear friends and subscribers have been uh, very very cooperative on this cricket show uh, to uh, really understand uh, uh, what this show is all about uh, well so what I'm going to do uh, is today I'm going to talk about the Caribbean Premier League and then we'll look at some news uh, which is happening there's some one one controversial um, episode which is coming up which I'll be talking about this is coming in from England and the person in the news uh, very very surprisingly it is Monty Panesser of England so and and he's there for is 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 there for all the wrong reasons I would say well so let's first look at the uh, Caribbean uh, Premier League uh, which uh, which was a match between the St. Lucia Zooks and Antigua Hawksbells it was played at the Besajou Stadium Grass Islet St. Lucia and well, Antigua Hawks Bills uh, actually won the match uh, by 33 runs. Uh, now, now as far as uh, the match was concerned, Antigua Hawks Bills were the ones who batted first. Uh, they contributed. They made 166 for six of their 20 overs. Uh, Johnson Charles uh, really, really went like a train. Uh, he, in fact, more than Johnson Charles, it was uh, Kieran Powell who was going like a train by cracking 27 of just 16 deliveries in which he hit six boundaries in fact they went after Johnson Charles and Kieran Powell uh, went after the uh, St. Lucia Zooks ballers Dan and Sammy and Monet Markle and they really thumped them to the fence uh, and over, um, mostly thump thumping them to the fence uh, Ricky Ponting well um, uh, he made in fact so Johnson Charles 36 of 30 balls uh, five fours. Kiran Powell, 27 of uh, 16 balls, six fours. It was a good start, which was given, a decent start. Uh, Ricky Ponting, well, he made 20 of two f uh, with two fours. But uh, what was interesting was uh, Ponting had a, a sort of a real banter with uh, Tino Best because Tino Best was really riling Ponting, and then uh, both of them had a sort of a banter there. Uh, Marlon Samuel's contribution ran out for 12 of 13 deliveries. Uh, Thomas uh, made uh, 32 of 18 balls. He, he really uh, smashed the ball all around. 32 of 18 delivery, three fours and two sixes. Uh, and uh, finally, Kemp was not out on 13. Uh, Kemar Roche uh, was out for five. Cornwall was not out for eight. 166 for six of 20 overs is what uh, the uh, Antigua Hawks Bills finished with. It was a good score on this particular pitch. Uh, Sammy one for 29. Markel two for 27. Uh, Mathurin 1 for 31, Schillingford 1 for 21, uh, Sebastian 1 for 12, Tino Best was taken to the cleaners yesterday, uh, 4 hours uh, cost him 43 runs, and the St. Lucia Zooks, who are chasing 167, could muster only 133 for 8 of their 20 overs, thanks to some very good bowling, uh, especially uh, from uh, Marlon Samuels, uh, who was the man of the match, uh, for uh, some splendid bowling spell, uh, 4 overs, 1 maiden, 10 runs and he picked up 3 wickets. Uh, he picked up some very important wickets. Tommy McBall uh, who was uh, really really uh, firing. Well in fact uh, he, wa he was not really very confident but uh, still he managed 33 runs of 39 balls at 2 fours. and so he was the first victim for Samuels. Then Samuels also got the wicket of Miss Bowl Huck the Pakistan captain. As you know he's a cool as a cucumber person and if you know if you leave Miss Bowl Huck to really stay at the crease what he does is he builds an innings and finally when the time comes to really unveil some strokes he will do that and then it's possible that he would also get the team to victory so Marlon Samuels also got that vital wicket and then he picked up the very important wicket of the captain Darren Sammy uh, at the end uh, to uh, have this uh, St. Lucia Zooks innings uh, really really struggling at 133 for 8 uh, other than that um, uh, Duncan Fletcher uh, had a very quick fire of 20 of just seven deliveries, two fours and two sixes in that knock. Uh, Herschel Gibbs was out for five. Um, uh, Devon, uh, Devon Smith uh, contributed 12 runs. Uh, Markel uh, making a duck, and uh, Sammy, as I said, was out cheaply. 
Uh, Sebastian tried his bit uh, to really up the tempo, but uh, only as much as uh, getting unbeaten on 25 runs of 18 balls with three fours. Schillingford was a ball by Cottrell for four, Mathurin was not out on 12, and San Lucia Zooks in their 20 overs finished at 133 for eight. Uh, Kemar Roche, one for 40. Cottrell uh, was economical, one for 17 for him. Tongi, three overs, one for 16, but Samuels was the pick of the ballers. He also picked up the man of the match, uh, rightly so, four overs, one maiden. 10 runs and 3 wickets, Cornwall 1 for 13 and uh, Devon Thomas uh, bowled the uh, 4 overs 1 for 36. So that is as far as uh, this particular uh, match is concerned. Now let's look at some cricket news. Now as I said, uh, the news that we are looking at is uh, coming in from England. Uh, we are talking about uh, the English uh, left arm spinner Kevin uh, Monty Panesar and one would understand that after Graham Swan, uh, there's only one spinner that we can talk about uh, who is uh, really something uh, of a real uh, a threat to everybody and as you know <coughs> Monty Panesar was uh, roped into the squad uh, for the third test and then also uh, he played a big role uh, when uh, England uh, actually defeated India in their own den uh, with a combination of Graham Swan, the right arm spin of Graham Swan and uh, Monty Panesar's left arm spin uh, really really floating the Indians in their own den uh, so that was uh, that was a prime contributor uh, for England's victories of um, really defeating India there. So now the reason that I'm talking about Monty Panesar uh, is that yesterday uh, he was in the news for all the wrong reasons, which is very surprising. Uh, what he did is, um, uh, in fact, he was in a bar probably, and uh, he actually. Uh, did a very lewd act. In fact, uh, he, he went and uh, urinated on the bouncers uh, who are there and then they had to pull him up and he has been fined for being drunk and uh, that is not something uh, that is going to get, go well with the ECB and I'm sure they're going to deal, deal, deal with this problem uh, with a very, very stern fist for sure. Uh, now, uh, I think that is something which has to be really, really seriously looked at. Um, now, Monty Panesar, one I would uh, I would reckon that he has done immense damage to his career prospects too, because uh, there are a lot of other good ballers uh, in England right now in the English county. We have Simon Kerrigan, uh, who is uh, making a lot of waves as far as uh, spin bowling is concerned. So, uh, it's not going to be uh, easy for Monty Panesar to find his uh, place back, and I'm sure um, uh, this is going to really really hurt Panesar, and he's going to rue that he did such a thing because. Uh, uh, Monty Panesar, we know he's not a good fielder, uh, but he's a handy bat, and but uh, mainly he's a very, very good, genuine left-arm spinner. He's a quality left-arm spinner, and um, you know, Monty Panesar, I think uh, one can, uh, one feels sorry for his left-arm spin, but uh, one really, really can't understand the thinking uh, behind uh, what Monty Panesar did, uh, getting drunk and then uh, doing such a lewd act, uh, which was, uh, which is never permissible as far as cricket is concerned. And well, he did that, and uh, well, he is paying the price for that. So that is the reason I wanted to talk about that. Just wanted to briefly dwell on that. So Monty Panesar, wish him good luck. Um, uh, probably, you know, uh, if at all um, they feel that you know, uh, they feel that he still deserves a place in the England team after doing what he did. Uh, well, uh, I would wish good luck to him. Well, uh, the other thing that I would like to really talk about as you know uh, match fixing as you know in IPL we had uh, certain players involved uh, we had uh, uh, Sri Sant was in the picture we had Chandila uh, and some other players now uh, that is something match fixing is something uh, which has happened in the past too we saw the Pakistani players being banned Mohammad Asif Salman Bhatt uh, being banned uh, so a lot of things have uh, Mohammad Amir uh, the youngster uh, we have seen that so match fixing is to be uh, really, really, you know, it has to be dealt with uh, with a very, very, uh, you know, uh, very, very strongly. And uh, the former uh, India captain and batsman Rahul Dravid feels uh, that um, match fixing is akin uh, to uh, a criminal offence. And so, if it's a criminal offence, uh, he says that you know uh, there should be uh, it has to be made a criminal offence, and uh, you know it has, be, it has to be dealt with very, very severely. Now, uh, well, I would say, yes, uh, in the context of things, one has to uh, definitely agree with uh, Rahul Dravid for the comment he has made. Match fixing is becoming absolutely rampant. Even though uh, we saw the Pakistani players uh, being banned, 
uh, still, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, no lessons have been learned and still uh, people are uh, getting away with it and it is really becoming like a part and parcel of cricket, unfortunately. And uh, it's time that uh, it is uh, rooted out of the system completely and uh, I'm sure ICC uh, has to really, really come up with some, uh, with some uh, stern measures as to how they are going to see to it that they root this out totally uh, out of this wonderful game of cricket. Well, uh, so that is as far as uh, that is concerned. Uh, and let me see whether I have any other news to cover. I'm just trying to see whether I can touch on something. Uh, uh, well, India has made it clear uh, that you know, unless and until the decision review system uh, has no loopholes, that is the only time that India will accept the DRS and uh, really makes sense because even after having the DRS we know what happened uh, in uh, the Ashes Test Series in the last Test match between England and Australia uh, where uh, you know even though the, the uh, on-field on, on umpire uh, ruled it uh, not out was referred and uh, the, even the TV umpire after seeing the replay uh, he came up, Kumar Dharmasana came up with the uh, verdict saying that uh, yes uh, he is out so uh, I mean, um, so this is what is uh, I mean. Uh, he uh, so this is what has been happening. Now uh, this is something uh, which is, uh, as I said, uh, I I would totally agree that uh, you know you have to have loopholes. Even I mean now there is also other talk going on that uh, probably uh, there is a sort of a silicone tape on the English uh, player's bat. Uh, probably Kevin Peterson who was pretty riled about it and a lot of things have been said uh, you know one does not know I don't want to go into those uh, things uh, you, you can yourself uh, read it on um, any of the cricket websites and you would uh, probably uh, get a better understanding of what has been going on but uh, well controversy over controversy uh, is uh, still ruling cricket and that is not supposed uh, that is not something which is supposed to happen so I only feel that you know senior counsel prevails uh, and we come to all the right decisions. Well, dear fans, friends, subscribers, uh, always a pleasure bringing you this Cricket Happening Show and also sharing uh, the Cricket Happening Show with you. As usual, your host Ram is definitely running out of time. It's time to wind up this Cricket Happening Show for today and your host Ram will see you tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>